guys, let's talk about the New Orleans Saints. Jay Glazer came out again. Now, he said this back in January, but, uh, but we're talking about it again here. Plans for life after Drew Brees. Now, you know, we all think that we know what these teams are thinking and whatnot, and obviously you took a flyer on a guy like Jameis Winston. That seems like it would be a really good backup plan going forward if uh, you can find a way to make him work out. Here is the article from Saints Wire. It says, Stop us if you heard this before, but Fox Sports NFL insider Jay Glazer reported to The Athletic that he fully expects Taysom Hill to take over at quarterback once Drew Brees has hung up his cleats. That's what Glazer wrote in his latest mailbag, echoing the same take he made back in January on Colin Cowherd's radio show. Glazer is tight with Saints coach Sean Payton. He has broken stories before, like Payton's five-year contract extension, and put the nail in the coffin for Antonio Brown, signing with the Saints after his bizarre free agent workout and high-profile fallout. Uh, whenever Peyton is seen on a parade float at Mardi Gras, Glazer is usually right there with him as his guest. So, it should not be a surprise that Glazer has rare insight into Peyton's thinking. And when asked by a reader if the faith the Saints have shown in Hill so far is genuine, he was very quick to confirm it. Here's his quote. No smokescreen. He's the guy. Sean Peyton loves him, but it's not just him. The whole team loves him. Watch a Saints game. Uh, when he is... in my thing reloaded. Hold on. <laughs> I swear to God, I hate these stupid phones. Uh, when he's in the game, watch the other players on the sideline. Watch their reaction. They all get up and stand on the sidelines to watch him. Uh, Glazer continued, I think Sean was always hoping to unleash him on the league without anyone seeing him before, but now we've seen it with Lamar Jackson. He's a bigger Lamar Jackson. No, it's not a smoke screen. He likes him that much. He'll be the guy. He's with the perfect coach for that. Now, this man just compared Taysom Hill to Lamar Jackson. Maybe maybe we need to pump the brakes a little bit. Yeah, yeah. You, I, I'm not. I'm not buying this. If this is the Saints' future, I, I think they are making a gross miscalculation. I like. Don't get me wrong. I I think that he could be. Um, he could be a good player. Like he's I think already he's a been really a good player. exciting backup. But but could he be a starting quarterback in the NFL? I do not believe that. I don't believe that either. I'm. I just, I love Sean Payton. Obviously, he has proven it time and time again in this league. Uh, He's won a Super Bowl, et cetera, et cetera. Um, Let's see. Oh, McKinnon said, I think they also picked up the new Taysom Hill style rookie so Taysom could actually move into being a backup quarterback and let the new guy run the old Taysom plays. Um, I guess we're talking about Tommy Stevens, but good gracious, I doubt that you're going to keep four quarterbacks on the roster. I mean that's insane. Hey, they might. Hey, hey, I got some. I got some franchise tag m- info just so we can close the book on that. Okay. So the first year that you get franchise tag, you get uh, the average of the top three paid guys. So you take the top three paid quarterbacks or top three paid players at your position, you average those together. That's your pay guaranteed for that year. All right. Okay. If they franchise tag you a second time, they take the amount that they paid you that year. It's 120%. So you get 20% raise on top of that. That's a big jump. That's a big jump. Yeah. If they do it a third time, it's 44% to that number, not the previous number, the original number. It's 44% more on top of that. Whew. So I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what that looks like in true numbers. If the franchise tag is $30 million, They'll pay you the next year $36 million. So the franchise tag you uh, two years, you'll make $36 million for the second year. 36 times. The third year, which is why it will never happen the third year, would be $52 million. Ooh, yeah, never happen. It'll, it'll never, it'll just, it's there to stop people from doing it. And if they're going to do it, they have just said, we don't believe in you. We can't get a deal done, but we can't win without you. And so here's all the money you want. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So let's let's move back into Taysom Hill. I got some numbers for you. In the last two years in the league, Taysom Hill has completed six passes out of 13 attempts. He has 119 yards. Um, he has one interception with zero touchdowns. And yet this is going to be their backup quarterback. I I don't follow this at all. I don't understand 
why they are so in love with the idea of him at quarterback. Now, if you're looking at rushing numbers, um, okay, like uh, maybe, I guess. Uh, he had 37 rushes for 196 yards, um, and that was in 2018, and then he had 27 rushes for 156 yards last year. Like, obviously, the guy is pretty good. But he's like a situational anomaly. Like, he just comes in and he makes plays based off of the fact that nobody knows what's coming. What am I missing? Ronnie Brown ran the Wildcat better than any running back we've ever seen before, ever. He was unbelievable at it. Doesn't mean he could play quarterback. Yeah. Like I, the fact that all the other teammates watch and they pay attention when he comes in, it's because they know they're about to run a gimmick play. And gimmick plays are fun. Gimmick plays are cool. They know it's not going to be a draw. Like, so why? So that's why they get on their feet, and that's why they get excited. That's why they show up. That doesn't mean it's a smart move. Yeah. But here's the thing. I think sometimes these coaches just get a little too ahead of themselves. I like Sean Payton. I think Sean Payton is an outstanding coach in the NFL. Outstanding coach. I think he wants to see if he can win without Breeze. And instead of just finding another quarterback, he's just going to say, hey, I'll take this kid. And if I can win with him, then whatever. Yeah. And Matt said, can he get a third torn ACL as a starter? Yeah, he, uh, he had two of those at, at BYU. So, you know, his numbers at BYU, not great. He missed two seasons uh, because of it. His uh, his junior year, he missed half the year. His uh, senior year, he missed the entire thing, and then he came back for his fifth season. Um, I mean, he, you know, never great. As a freshman, 59% completion percentage. Uh, as a sophomore, he started all 13 games, 53.9% completion percentage, uh, had 2,900 yards passing. I never got close to that again. Um, you know, he just... Like, I'm just out. I'm out. Yeah, I'm out. I'm I don't out. understand this. I'm not interested. I have I have zero interest in any Taysom Hill. I, as I a start back in two or three years, like, I might be wrong. At, as, as a quarterback, uh, Michael said, I hope he's playing quarterback for the Saints week 11 in Denver. Uh, trust me, if Drew Brees goes down, I guarantee you Jameis Winston is going to be the backup. Guaranteed. That's. I'd be shocked. I just would be shocked. Yeah. I mean, it, this this makes no sense. Makes no sense. I don't understand it. Of course, Probably you don't mind one. that either because that means you're going to get a couple of defensive scores. Yeah. <laughs> you're probably right. You're probably right. Statistically, um, you'll get three. Yes. Yes, 100%. 100%. Let's, uh, let's move on from that. Um, we got two more topics for the day. So... <laughs> 